Also in this package, President Mahama has been meeting administration officials and security chiefs in an emergency session in the wake of Wednesday's rains that left parts of Accra City inundated. Wednesday's rains also saw fire sweep through the Goyofilin station at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, leaving scores dead. GBC 24 brings you the speech delivered by President Mahama at the National Emergency Meeting. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. We've just um, concluded a national crisis meeting of the National Security Council to review the national disasters that have hit our country, leading to what the security and emergency services have officially counted to be about 150 deaths. The official toll will be known after the search and rescue exercise is over. Earlier this morning, as early as 6.30 a.m., I visited the Kwame Nkrumah interchange area. After spending the night and early dawn monitoring the situation and receiving briefings from my service commanders, a leakage from a Goyal service station located close to the Kwame Nkrumah interchange caused an explosion that killed many people who had sought shelter there from the torrential downpour that had inundated the city. The inferno quickly spread and engulfed a nearby pharmacy and several properties adjoining the fuel service station claiming more casualties. It took extraordinary work by personnel of the Ghana Fire Service to prevent the fire from spreading to the Ghana Commercial Bank building close by. On behalf of the people of Ghana, I convey my sincerest sympathies to the families and relations of the persons affected by the fire disaster. Obviously, the casualties from the fire disaster increase because of the heavy rains and resultant flooding of many areas, including the immediate vicinity of the Goyal service station. Over the past three days, Various parts of Accra recorded varied measurements of torrential rainfall. The highest recorded amounted to 269.2 millimeters. This was far above the highest measurement of 180.4 millimeters that fell in Accra over a two-day period last year. Wild floods are a natural characteristic of rivers and streams in their lower courses. The severity and damage they can cause are exacerbated by uncontrolled human settlement and activity. Accra lies in the flat plain of several rivers and streams that take their sources from the Equapim mountain range. Ground saturation caused by the heavy downpour of the last three days together with human activities such as unbridled littering and building in waterways, has resulted in impeding the flow of these rivers and streams into the sea, and thereby caused unprecedented flooding in several parts of the capital city. There have naturally been resultant effects of this, including the destruction of buildings, washing away of vehicles with passengers in them, and many other victims drowned in the resultant floods. Many other Ghanaians were trapped in the traffic chaos that occurred as a result of the high water in many areas. A tragedy of this magnitude requires a strong and concerted response, and that is what government and many Ghanaians are currently offering. Our security and emergency services, and indeed Ghanaians, have all joined hands and in a spirit of unity are offering support to victims of these disasters. I wish to salute the members of our security and emergency services for their gallant response to the search and rescue exercise that was declared yesterday. But for their diligence, it is obvious that many more would have perished. 
Many of them have not had any rest over the past 24 hours. I also wish to acknowledge and commend the sense of solidarity displayed by our political party chairpersons and general secretaries who, upon learning the magnitude of the disaster, visited the affected area together as a group. This show of nationalism devoid of partisanship has greatly uplifted the spirits of our people at a time of great national tragedy. From the weather warnings announced by the Ghana Meteorological Agency, we can expect more rains over an extended period of time, especially within the next two weeks. It requires proper emergency services planning to ensure that any challenges that occur are effectively tackled. Accordingly, the National Disaster Management Organization and the Ghana Armed Forces will be providing and setting up emergency shelter zones within the affected areas to provide refuge for persons displayed, displaced by the flooding. I appeal also to our churches and mosques to make their premises and facilities available to provide any additional shelter to any displaced persons in their communities. A national call center has been activated and will be available for the public to call to report emergencies and provide information or to send out alerts. The number to call to reach the National Call Center is 112 from all Vodafone, MTN, and Airtel lines. The Ministry of Communications will be working with the various media houses to put out information, weather warnings, safety tips, and promotion of the National Emergency Call Center number 112 and other emergency lines. The Ministry of Health has provided a number of ambulances dedicated to the National Disaster Operations Center for collapse and use where the need arises. <coughs> the Ministry has also activated the necessary structures and started work towards preventing any probable health challenge, including cholera. I encourage all Ghanaians, especially residents in flood-prone areas, to observe these warnings and safety tips when they are put out to minimize casualties in the event of any future flooding. Government has allocated an amount of 50 million Ghana cities to cover relief and humanitarian operations, repair of damaged public infrastructure, and desilting and clearing of water waste. This exercise would affect other towns that would find themselves in other situations in other parts of the country. Our current priority now is to save lives and prevent any further suffering of our people. But beyond that, we'll take the tough measures that are necessary to prevent, pre prevent, prevent such disasters from occurring in the future. The National Disaster Management Organization, the Hydrology Department of the Ministry of Water Resources, Works and Housing, and the city authorities will also work to coordinate the clearing and expansion of our waterways and the desilting of our drains. Drastic steps are necessary here if we are to permanently address this perennial problem. We'll intensify our efforts to expand and modernize our drainage system. In this endeavor, I request your understanding and the cooperation of Ghanaians to set right what has been wrong with our country for far too long. We cannot continue to allow a situation where the convenience of a few undermines the safety of many. Search and rescue operations will continue till the weekend, Sunday. On Monday, we will observe three days of national mourning for the victims of the fire disaster and the flooding. Flags will fly at half mast from Monday for three days. Fellow Ghanaians, as we mourn the deceased today and the days ahead, let us work together as one team and one nation united in grief but determined not to ever have 
a repeat of such a national disaster. I continue to count on your best intentions and efforts as we work together to heal the injured, console the bereaved families, and implement the strategies to avoid a recurrence in the future. I thank you very much.